Napa know-how. The Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolored paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't hesitate because I am a seed. Because every good and all right. Praise the Lord, everyone. I know you hear my voice. This is Reverend Ray. Amen. This is his and Grace and Minister Van. Amen. I do have a message um, from her. It's a pre recorded message. It's called Don't Look Back. Amen. I just got it hot off the press yesterday, man, and uh, I uploaded it. So we're going to be um, listening to that. Amen. And to everything that God is doing. Amen. So we're excited about today. Amen. We can go ahead and get started, play a couple of commercials, and uh, make a couple of announcements and um, all that good stuff. And we should be back in a minute. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Rev. Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Rev. Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work. For an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a word in season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., Be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Rev. Curtis, Rev. Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. And on four Saturdays, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson, where she shares a broad range of topics to help believers persevere and overcome. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time.
When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, so all of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com, and click on our donation page. Amen, amen. Welcome back, everybody. This is Regress and Speak Talk Radio. This is His Abounding Grace from Minister Van. No, I'm not Minister Van. I'm Reverend Ray. Amen. We're going to play a, a, a message that she sent to me on yesterday. And her, t- his topic, her topic is Don't Look Back. Uh, before that, we do want to talk to you a little bit about some things real quick, if you don't mind. Amen. Uh, we had a good time on Sunday. We did an interview with Reverend Paul Morgan. Amen. It was exciting. I, 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 he said, uh, go back and listen to the interview with Reverend Paul Morgan. Amen. We do have some upcoming events. Amen. That we want to make sure that we're mentioning, mentioning it right now. Uh, uh, Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson will be with us in the month of August for uh, for a series that I'm excited about called Marriage Takeover, the body of one. Amen. And also, praise God, we will have with us uh, probably the fourth Friday of the month. I think that's what we're looking at. Amen. Uh, Prophet Monica Williams, who is a pastor now, would be with us on Friday Night Joy. And she, her topic would be Shattered Hearts and Shattered Minds. Amen. And, of course, we're working on working with um Reverend um, Shanina uh, Robinson and someone else to come with us and talk with us some different things before the month is out also. So a lot of different things that's going on. We're excited about what God is doing um, in the body of Christ. Amen. You already heard the different shows that are coming out. I want to make special note, special uh, mention of Evangelist Louis McElwain. Uh, his adoration broadcast is every third month in the month. And he will be broadcasting, man, um, not in the States. Amen. He will be broadcasting. Let me make, 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 make turn to the right place here. Amen. I'm excited about it. I got a chance to talk with him earlier. Amen. Um, told me to have a safe trip back. And, amen. Okay, here we go. Uh, he will be broadcasting, broadcasting from Guatemala. Um, 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 come Monday, the third Monday for his at show. So adoration, this is a first. <laughs> so we're excited about what God is doing with him. Amen. But let's go ahead and um, tune in to Minister Van. Amen. Don't look back. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're just going to be sharing a few words of encouragement with you this evening or Tonight, whatever time it is, wherever you are, we're just going to be sharing some words of encouragement with the title message, Don't Look Back. Don't Look Back. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for all that you are to us. Father, we ask you to search our hearts and our minds right now. If there be anything that's not pleasing you, Father, please forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this radio ministry where Christians speak talk radio, where you allow us to share some encouraging words, Lord, that for those who are saved, they can just go a little bit further in you, Father, just to share some words of encouragement that for those who are not saved, that this, they would know that all they need to do is come to you, Father, repent of their sins, Lord God, ask you to forgive them of their sins, and that You would do just what you said in your word you would do, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for this ministry again. We thank you, Lord God, for all those who are listening in. You said in your word, when it goes forth, it will never return unto you void, that it would go out and accomplish that which you have purposed 
for it to accomplish. So we thank you, Lord God. We praise your name. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Don't look back. Genesis 19, just to give you some background. There was a city called Sodom, and it was full of evil, all sorts of sin. In Genesis, the 18th chapter, the 16th to 33rd verse, the Lord revealed to Abraham that he was going to destroy Sodom because of all the wickedness and evil and sin throughout that city. There was so much going on during that time. Homosexuality was just rampant there. Now, this was the city that Lot, Abraham's cousin, lived when the two separated earlier on. Because of Abraham's faithfulness towards God, God spared Lot. So this is how the story goes. Two angels visited Lot and his family. Lot knew that the city was so wicked, so he persuaded the visitors to stay in his home instead of staying on the streets overnight. The city of Sodom was so wicked that some homosexual men wanted Lot to let them have the two visitors, which were really two angels. Lot, in a desperate plea to save the angels, actually offered up his own daughters in exchange for the angels. The men refused. They actually wanted the two visiting men. Can you imagine this? So much sin. So much sin. Well, God uh, allowed the angels to temporarily blind these wicked men. So in Genesis 19, the angels insisted that Lot and his family leave the city because it was going to be destroyed. Lot tried to persuade his sons-in-law to leave with him, but they didn't believe him. They thought Lot was joking because Lot himself had fallen into a backslidden position, a backslidden life. So when the morning came, the angels escorted Lot, his wife, and daughters out of Sodom. Now, we don't have the name of Lot's wife, but that's not important here, as you will see in a minute. This family, they were told not to look back. Don't look back. But although Lot's wife left the city, her heart, you see, was still in it. Her heart was still there. And she fell under the judgment of God. You see, she looked back, and she was immediately turned into a pillar of salt. Lot's wife looked back. She couldn't resist the temptation. And because of her disobedience or her unbelief, she was turned into a pillar of salt. Don't look back, brothers and sisters. Would you have done the same thing had you been Lot's wife? Would temptation have ruled you? Would you have looked back? In Luke, the 17th chapter, the 28th verse, it says, and this is Jesus speaking here, Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day the Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. The 31st says, Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. 31st and 32nd verse. In that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. And then Jesus is in verse 32 here. Remember Lot's wife. She was told not to look back, but she was disobedient. Don't look back, my friend. Don't look back. Thank God for your deliverance. Once God has brought you out of something, don't allow temptation to lure you back. Don't allow temptation to bring up memories of those dark times. You may be tempted to revert back to bad habits, but don't. You may be tempted to revisit some of your old friends whose company you know will bring you down. You may be tempted, but don't do it. Don't look back. Don't allow curiosity of what's going on back there to drag you back to your old ways, to your old way of thinking, to your old former self, where you didn't allow God to be in control. Don't look back. Don't look back to the world and what the world offers you. Don't look back to the former things. Don't even allow your mind to wander just a minute. Stay focused on God and all that God is doing for you now. Stay focused on the path that God has set for you. Stay focused on striving to be all that God wants you to be. That's not in the past. That's in the future. For once God has set you free, 
you are free indeed, but you must remain faithful to his word. Philippians 3.14 says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's Paul speaking here. When you look back, when you allow your mind to wander, if you're not careful, you'll, you'll begin to get into a backsliding position. The Old Testament uses the term backsliding to speak of those who have been near to God but have allowed sin to take them away from him. The prophet Jeremiah said, Our backsliding is great. We have sinned against you. That's in Jeremiah 14, 7. Backsliding in scripture is always seen as a very serious matter. Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord God Almighty. Jeremiah 2, 19. Backsliding can be caused by many things. However, whatever the sin might be that leads us away from God, it must be dealt with honestly and brought before him in repentance. God loves us, you see, and God wants us to be close to him. Even when we sin against him, he promises to forgive. I will heal thy waywardness and love them freely, for my anger has turned away from them. Hosea 14.4 We must always fight against backsliding. For if we do backslide, we know that when we renounce, that is when we repent our sin and return to God, there is forgiveness and reconciliation. The Bible says in 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. It's only when you trust and obey God that you can avoid slipping and sliding into a backslidden position. You don't have to look back, you see. Look up and live. Acknowledge God in all your ways. Don't give in to temptation. I came across an article the other day. It was written by um, George Douglas Watson on the 10 causes of backsliding. Now, I won't go over all of them, but he basically starts off by saying, throughout the scriptures, we are taught about the infinite frailty and weakness of men. And even the best of men are set forth as having no strength of their own. Abraham said he was but dust and ashes. Isaiah said, we all do fade as a leaf. Job said, I abhor myself. Paul, the great apostle Paul said, I am less than the least of all saints. And Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. All strength must be imparted to the soul from God. On one side, there are many who have wandered from God, who do not have the humility or the fullness of light to understand or confess it. And on another side, millions of God's children have been painfully conscious of shortcomings, backsliders of greater or less extent. There is no degree of grace which may not be lost. This is also consistent with the doctrine so clearly taught in many scriptures that a saint can feel assured of his ultimate salvation. In the passage of Corinthians, which says, Let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. The original tells us, let him who assuredly stands take heed. That is, let the most advanced believer who has the fullest assurance of faith take heed lest he fall. And then um, this author goes on to adopt, adapt some words um, from Beauty for Ashes that was written in 1896. He says, uh, looking on forbidden things. These are things that will cause you to get into a backslidden position. Looking on forbidden things. When you wander from God, often begin by looking on forbidden objects. For example, the eye is allowed to rest too long upon an object of temptation. Through the eye, through the, through the, eye, the thoughts that take hold upon the object, this stirs up strong and unlawful desires. This weakens the will. And the outcome is sin, greater or lesser degree. Such was the case for Eve, for example, who stood looking at the forbidden fruit. Can you see her standing and looking at it? And God told her not to eat it. And she know God told her not to eat it. This was the case of David, who was gazing from the top of the palace, 
this is the art that Satan even tried on Jesus when he spread before his mental vision all the kingdoms of the earth and all their glory in one impressive display of worldwide sovereignty and splendor. But Jesus instantly turned his mental eye from the beautiful vision and fixed it on his coming cross. Hallelujah. We must take our eyes on the temp off the temptation and think about the cross and what Jesus did for us. What Jesus did for us. See what Jesus used as this as an example. This is the best cure for all fascinating and tempting visions. To get in the mind the precious blood of Jesus. The sight of Christ crucified is the cure for unholy mental pictures. So when your mind wants to wander off into things that are ungodly, think about Christ. And how he died on that cross for you. And then another thing that would cause you to get into a, a backsliding position is self-management. Another cause of heart wanderings is, is self-management. And attempting to take matters into our own hands. Trying to help the Lord in his handling of our cases. God doesn't need your help. God does not need your help. Another thing. Self-confidence. Sometimes we get cocky. Sometimes we get so confident and we lean on our own natural or acquired strength instead of leaning on God. The soul which has been highly favored of God or is possessed with strong natural traits will instinctively lean upon itself until it has been thoroughly broken. This was the cause with Peter, who was so confident of the inherent largeness of his character that he vowed, Peter vowed, that though all the others would forsake Jesus, that he would never forsake him. Those are taken from beautiful ashes. I'm telling you, be in carriage, but don't look back. Don't look back. There's nothing back there that you need to look back for. Don't be like the children of Israel. Once God released them from Pharaoh's slavery, when they were in the wilderness, they began to look back. Because they had forgotten what it was really like to be in bondage. And they thought God had forgotten them out in the wilderness. So they began to complain to Moses. They began to complain, bicker, and mutter, mumble about where they were then. Exodus, the 14th chapter, and the second, starting with the second verse. That's Exodus 14, uh, starting with the second verse. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn in and camp before Pharaoh between Magdal and the sea, over against Bazidor, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Fourth verse. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, says the Lord, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, the Egyptians, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Fifth verse. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord... And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, Israel went out with a high hand. But the, the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Pharaoh before Bethlehem. Tenth verse. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, get this, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? You know, they have forgotten all about God's promise. They have forgotten all about what Moses has shared with them, that God was going to take them through, that God was going to take them through, that God was going to deliver them. When they were seized with a moment of fear, they allowed fear to grasp them so much so that they looked back. And they looked back and thought about how all the food they had 
and they looked back and thought about where they had homes to um, lay down there, but they didn't remember all those things they, that they did when they were in bondage. They looked back to the to the good of life, if you will, forgetting all the bad things. Sometimes that is with us. We'll look back, and Satan will have our mask warped so that we'll think on the good things. We won't think about those bad things that happened and why it was so awful. The twelfth verse says, Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. E- Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. wilderness. They have forgotten God's promise. The 13th verse, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Moses is reminding them, he's telling them, first, fear not. He tells them to stand still, and then he tells them, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians which you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. God delivered the children of Israel out of the hands of Pharaoh, and yet they started complaining again. You see, they started complaining again. They started looking back again. For the 16th verse picks up with, And they took their journey for Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month after the departing out of the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And this is the sixteenth chapter. So we were reading earlier where they had forgotten all that God had told them, and Moses had told them, "Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord." And God proved Himself to them. He allowed them to cross over the Red Sea. He proved Himself to them. But here we are in the 16th chapter. And they took the journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Mm. Just as Moses told the children of Israel back then, back there, back then, I tell you now, my friends, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Whatever you're going through right now, look towards the the cross. Look towards what God has already done. Don't look back. Don't look back. Just stand still. God knows what he's doing. God knows the plans he has for you. God knows the path you should take. God knows because he is God. Do you trust him? You got to trust him. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Just dwell and meditate on scriptures that will encourage you when your mind wants to wander off to the old way of things, to your old manner of thinking. Have faith in God. Hebrews 11:6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. When your mind wants to go over to those old days, to the old stuff, acknowledge that you need him. Go to God. Cast your burden on the Lord, as Psalms 55 and 22 tells us. And you know, the devil does not have your mind. Remember, whatever things he tried to shoot at you, whatever fear of doubt he tried to come at you with, remember Isaiah 55, 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon. You got to stand on the word of God. And remember, God's going to take care of you. Just like he took care of you yesterday, just like he's taking care of you today, God is going to take care of you tomorrow. For Matthew 6, 34 says, Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. I tell you, my friend, I'm telling you, these are just words to encourage you. Just like John 14, 1 says, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? 
Believe also in me. This was Jesus speaking. This was Jesus speaking. He says, don't be wary. Don't be wary. I said, I'll never leave you. I said, I'll never be forsake, forsake you. I said, I'll be with you always. And care of yourself. Sometimes you just got to speak to that mirror. You, just like Psalms 4 and 8 says, I will both lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Know that your father knows you. Your father has your best interest. Matthew 6, I'm sorry, Matthew 10, 29 says, Not one sparrow falls to the ground apart from your father's will. He knows all about you. He knows his perfect will for you. He takes care of us. We just need to lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him. Don't you know his word is true when he says greater is he that's in you than he who is in the world? So don't worry about what's going on in the world today. Don't worry about what people might say about you. Don't worry about what man might try to do to you. Remember, you've got that greater one within you. First John 4, 4, the greater one lies within you. And greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Psalms 1, 3 says, and he shall be like a tree Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Thank God. God knows all about it. He knows all about it. That's why we should take up everything, our desires, our prayers to God. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. He wants us to come to him. Just as a father or a mother wants the child to come to them. God, our Heavenly Father, wants us to come to him we serve a great god we serve a mighty god don't you know we serve a god that's awesome loves us so much that wants us to take our yokes and and give it to him lean on him for he is meek and lowly in heart don't you know eyes have not seen nor ears have heard neither has neither has entered into the heart of man what god has in store for you if you press your way press your way don't live in fear. Don't live in defeat. You are already victorious through Christ. Through Christ. God carries us. He carries us. Just like the Deuteronomy 131 says, You know how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son. I want to encourage you. Don't look back. Don't look back. Let these words be encouragement to you. Boldly say, The Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do. Don't you know that you should wait upon the Lord because it's God that renew your strength? Yes, you may get tired in the body, but God shall renew your strength. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. As Psalms 37 and 7 says, he wants us to rest in him. He doesn't want us to go our mass to go to and fro. He don't want us to live. He does not want us to live in fear. He does not want us to live in fear. False evidence appear in rear. He wants to live by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Encourage yourself and then encourage your brother and your sister. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the, on the things of others. We need to encourage each other. We need to encourage each other. You need encouragement and one day you need to take that same encouragement you receive and encourage someone else. Because it's iron sharpening iron. We all need each other. Stop praising him. There is something that happens when you start praising him. When you start thinking about all those negative things and your mind wants to go back to the way things used to be, I dare you to just break out and give him praise. Wherever you are, just break out and give him praise. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise God. Give him praise. Let your mind start meditating on the goodness of God and all that he's done for you. And start praising him. For that praise needs to come from within. Praise him. For the word of God says when praises go up, I know blessings will come down. For God inhabits the praises of his people. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't give in to temptation. Don't be persuaded, be persuaded to go back to allow your mind to go back to the times of old. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday is gone. Thank God for new opportunities. Thank God for new opportunities to get it right. Praise His name. Praise His name. Give Him the praises. Give Him the glory for all that belongs to Him. Stop praising Him. Whenever you think you overcome by fear. 
put kick fear to the curb and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I walk by faith and not by sight. I thank you, Father, that you're good to me and that your goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. Thank you, Father. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Just remember, just like the church of Israel, you don't want to look back. You don't want to look back. Just remember that God is God and he's faithful to you. And he desires that you forever keep your mind um, stayed on him. Don't look back. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. She looked back and began to meditate, I'm sure, on those things. What curiosity got the best of her. Don't allow curiosity to get the best of you. Don't allow it. Don't look back, my brothers, my sisters. Don't look back. God knows the plans he has for you. It's pressing forward towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. God loves you. Be encouraged and know that he is faithful concerning those things that concern you. He loves you so much. Lord, we thank you. Let's go to God in prayer. We thank you, Father, for these words of encouragement. We thank you, Father, that you've given us an opportunity to share, to pour out, Lord God, your word, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for being with us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you're better to us than we are to ourselves. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Now, dear God, there may be somebody, Lord God, that needs to cry out to you this day. What must I do to be saved? Lord God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you touch their hearts, Lord God. Touch their minds, Lord God. Let them focus, Lord God, that that they can do nothing without you, Lord God. That with you all things are possible, Lord God. That all they need to do is repent of their sins. Ask you to forgive them of their sins. And remember that, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to down the cross of their sins. And that they can live freely in you. And then let them reach out to us and we'll share with them the good news. That you save them, Lord God. That you will save them, Lord God. Because all they have to do is reach out to you, Lord God. Repent of their sins. And confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus. That God sent his son, Jesus, down the cross for the sins. Confess with their mouth. Ask God to forgive them other sins and then know and believe that God has done just that. Now, Lord, I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you, Lord God, for encouraging somebody who may have lost their way. Lord, we thank you for this vehicle right now. We praise you, Father, for all you've done and all you will do. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen. If this message has been encouragement to you, please let us know. Please respond to When Christians Speak Talk Radio and let us know that this message has been encouragement to you. We just love you. We God bless you. And just stay forth, focused on what's before you and not what's behind you. Amen. 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 You've been listening to Minister Vanessa Williams. Amen. On his abounding grace, the top of the day was don't look back. I truly believe that you've been blessed. Please share this message. Amen. You can listen to the message. In it. It's entirely probably about another 20 minutes from on Blog Talk Radio or the different social media sites that we are listed on. They also can go to our website, com. Don't forget, amen, if you have a desire to give to the ministry, you can do so by do it, going to com and clicking on the Donate Now button. Amen. We would love to hear from you what your thoughts are about what we're doing. And, and um, if you have an interest in coming on to the broadcast, you can get in contact with us at WinChristianSpeak at gmail.com. Amen. And just uh, let me know what's up. Amen. Um, again, don't forget on tomorrow, we got Challenge to Change with Pastor Paul Morgan. Amen. At 7 p.m. We also, at 1 o'clock p.m., we have Reverend Gwen Dixon, which is every Wednesday, Midday Glory Prayer with Reverend Gwen Dixon. 1 o'clock. Amen. The dialing number for that particular show. Amen. It's a conference call is 641-715-3580. The SS call is 732-499-732. Yeah, 499. Amen. And, of course, on Thursday, amen, we have Reverend Pat Randall declaring the finished work. Amen. With Reverend Pat Randall, Thursday at 12 noon. I'll be back with Friday Night Joy. Amen. Uh, Bread of Life is on Sunday 
at 7 p.m. Friday Night Joy at 7 p.m. The Alabasta Box with Prophet Carla Johnson is every fourth Saturday at 7 p.m. Amen. And Apostle Shirley Jones comes on. Amen. Every first Monday of the month at 7 p.m. Amen. Um, I think I missed somebody. Yeah, there you go. Reverend Lewis, Evangelist Lewis McElwain. Amen. We'll be hosting a program called Adoration every third Monday. Don't forget, third Monday. Amen. Amen. We're excited about he would not be broadcasting here in the United States. He'd be broadcasting abroad. And I'm excited about that. Amen. And what God is doing in this young man's life. Amen. So uh, let me turn back to my notes. Amen. Amen. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. This is, I mean, Mac, I'm done, man. Mac, he'd, be, he'd be broadcasting, I call him Mac. He'd be broadcasting in Guatemala, Guatemala live, amen, um, for adoration. So, we're excited about what God is doing, even with adoration, okay? So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. We thank you. Uh, show us, show some brothers, show us some brothers and sisters some love by liking our Facebook page from Christian Speak or checking out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. Amen. Go back and listen to some of the previous um, shows that we've had on so far. We've had well over a thousand. We've been doing this now for four years, and God has truly uh, blessed this ministry to be a blessing to you and, and even to us. Amen. This is about spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And amen. And having um, um, talking points on to uh, what people are actually facing. That's why we do what we do. Amen. So be blessed, y'all. Have a good um, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, be safe out there and know that God loves you and I love you. And you can't do a thing about it. This is His About the Grace. I'm Reverend Ray. We'll sign it out.